the modeling change. So in the previous lesson, we saw how we can model change when a certain amount increases by a certain percentage each and every day, right? So now let's say in addition to our amount gaining a certain percentage every day, what happens if I also remove a fixed amount every day? So let's have an example. So I'm just gonna make a statement, right? So let's suppose I give you 100 and every day it gains 20%. Of the previous amount right but you choose to spend eight rand per day so here's what is happening so i'm giving you 100 which is your initial amount this amount will undergo a change of 20 percent every day and it will also undergo a change of Eight rand subtraction every day. Now, the initial model that we did in the previous lesson said that a sub n is equal to a sub. Um, okay, so a sub n plus one equal to a sub n multiplied by one plus x. This is what we had in the previous step. But now we have c, so we are removing a certain amount each and every day. So I'm going to subtract c from this, um, the first relation that we had, right? So now, we have to be able to determine a model that will help us be able to determine how much will I have or will you have, right? How much will you have on Thursday, right? If you start on Monday. So now let's try to do this manually. And then we'll also develop a model that will help us to calculate this. Now, let's say on Monday, the money is the initial value. is just 100. It didn't change, right? And then on Tuesday, on Tuesday, what's happening? I'm going to take the previous amount, which is 100. I multiplied by 20% and I subtract 8 rand. So here's what happened. Your amount gained. Okay. So you are, you are in, increasing it, right? So you have to add the previous amount, then you now subtract 8 rand. So it's 100 multiplied by 0 0.2, then plus 100, then minus 8. You've got 112 on Tuesday, right? Then on Wednesday, how much do you have? Your previous amount is now 112. So 112 is going to gain 20% of the previous amount, then you subtract 8 rand again, right? So 112 multiplied by 20% plus 112 minus 8 is going to give you 126.4 right so you are going to have a value of 126.4 on wednesday then on thursday i'm going to have the previous amount is now 126.4 you multiply by 20 percent and you add that existing amount and then you subtract 8. now what do we have I'm going to multiply the previous amount by 20% and I add the amount and I subtract 8. Then um, if you do that, let's see what we get. I'm going to get 143.68. So this is, how, uh, this is how much you are supposed to have on, on, on this day, right? Now, our initial step was at position 0. Our next step is at position 1, then position 2, and then position 3. Now, we have this model over here, which we are going to derive right now, and then we are going to use it to solve the very same problem to verify if indeed on this day we will have this amount. So now, let's get to that. So, we know that a sub n plus 1 is equal to a sub n multiplied by 1 plus x. If there's no subtraction, it's going to be like this. If there's subtraction, then you have to add C. Where C is a fixed number, it does not change, right? So every day, we assume we are removing 8, eight run every day, unless stated otherwise. Now, let's start at N equal to 0. 
I'm going to evaluate n equal to from n equal to zero. I'm going to replace n with zero in this relation over there. So a sub zero plus one, which is a sub one, equal to a sub naught multiplied by one plus x and minus c. If I let n to be equal to one, I'm going to have a sub two is equal to a sub naught multiplied by one plus um okay this is one sorry then minus c right because if 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 i put one here it's gonna be one plus one and if i put one here it's gonna be a sub one but in the previous step we solved for a sub one which corresponds to this amount here so i'm gonna take it as it is then i'm gonna put it in this step over here okay now let's do that so a sub one is equal to a sub naught multiplied by one plus x minus c multiplied by one plus x and then minus c. then a sub two is equal to a sub naught if you distribute this to those two terms inside the bracket it's going to give you a sub naught multiplied by one plus x all squared minus c that is multiplied to one plus x and then you subtract c so this is now your a sub two Remember, the aim is to write everything in terms of the initial amount, right? So let me move down the page. Okay. All right. So now we are continuing with n equal to 2. If I replace n equal to 2, I'm going to have a sub 2 plus 1, which is a sub 3. Is equal to a sub 2 multiplied by 1 plus x and minus c, right? But in the previous step, I solved for a sub 2, which is this term over here, right? So I'm going to take it as it is and I'm going to put it here. So a sub 3 will be equal to a sub 2, which was given by a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x squared minus c multiplied by 1 plus x, then minus c, and this is multiplied by 1 plus x, and then subtract c. Therefore, a sub 3 is equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 3. If I distribute this to these terms over there, minus c multiplied by 1 plus x squared minus c multiplied by 1 plus x and then minus c. And then I can do the same for n equal to 3. So I'm going to end at n equal to 3, right? If n equal to 3, I'm going to have a sub 4 is equal to a sub skip 3 multiplied by 1 plus x then minus c. But I know the value of a sub 3 right from the previous step. So I'm going to check it and do the same thing. So now a sub 4 will be given by a sub 3 which was a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 3 minus c multiplied by 1 plus x squared minus c multiplied by 1 plus x and then minus c. And this was multiplied by 1 plus x, then you subtract c. Now, if you do that, you're going to get a sub 4 is equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 4. Right? Minus c multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 3. Minus c multiplied by 1 plus x squared. Minus c multiplied by 1 plus x, and then minus c. Well, if you go for n equal to 4, the space won't be enough. Right? So let's stop there. So now I'm going to gather my a1, a sub 2, and a sub 3, and a sub 4, and I'm going to put them. So now a sub naught is equal to a sub naught. Okay, nothing fancy about it. Then a sub 1 was equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x. Then a sub 2, okay, minus c. a sub 2 was a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x squared minus c multiplied by 1 plus x, then minus c, right? And then a sub 3 was equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 3 minus c multiplied by 1 plus x all squared minus c multiplied by 1 plus x and then minus c. Then lastly, a sub 4 was given by a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 4 minus c multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 3 minus c multiplied by 1 plus x all squared minus c multiplied by 1 plus x and then minus c. So now I've got these five um, expressions over here. Now I need us to be able to evaluate the change that is happening. 
Now, this number here will always match with the first one over here. Right, we see that. But then these exponents here, they decrease as, as, as they go. Okay, so 4, 3, 2, 1. So what can we say about this? If I do this thing for n number of steps, if I do this for n number of steps, I'm going to have a sub 4 is equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 4, right? So, minus c multiplied by, multiplied by what? Multiplied by, so, okay, before I pull out um, c as a common factor, let, let, let's write 3 in terms of 4. How can I write 3 in terms of 4? It's 4 minus 1, right? So, if I replace it, the 4 with n, it means that this one here is going to be n minus 1. It's going to be c multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1. So this was, this was um, if I replace this with n, right, this will be this, then minus c multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of n minus 2, and this will go up until I get to the last term, which is minus c. Well, let's check out c as a common factor. So a sub n is equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of n. If I check out c as a common factor, I can rewrite this thing in reverse, starting from this side going there, right? So where there was negative c, I removed negative c, so I have 1. So it's 1 plus um, some number of terms, which you don't know how many they are, and 1 plus x to the power of n minus 2, and plus 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1. Do you still remember what kind of a, a series or an nth term is still presented in this form? It's given by some number multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1. This is a geometric series. So I can represent this series here as a geometric series. And a formula for geometric series is that sn is equal to a multiplied by r to the power of n and minus 1 then divided by r minus 1. In this case, what is your ratio? Your ratio is 1 plus x, right? So your r is equal to 1 plus x. Your first term, which is a, is equal to 1. This means that a, s, n is equal to a, which is 1, multiplied by r, which is 1 plus x, to the power of n, minus 1, divided by what? Divided by 1 plus x, and then minus 1. And this breaks down to 1 plus x to the power of n, minus 1 divided by x, because this will cancel this one. So I can represent this whole series over here with this, right? So I'm going to do that. So finally, we have a sub n is equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of n minus c multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1 all divided by x. And this term here is representing this series here. Okay. So now what do you notice here? Now we have a formula that can help us calculate. Right. So we know from our statement that the initial value, which is a sub naught, was 100. The x, the change that the previous term is undergoing, was 20%, right? Which also corresponds to 0 0.2. And the c. The daily removals or the daily spend was 8 rand. So now I've got everything which I need to calculate um, the amount which I need on this day, right? But it's always important to, to notice something. Here. So I started, at, I started on Monday. Okay, let's write that, that down for more space. So I started on Monday where I had 100. Then on Tuesday, then on Wednesday, then on Thursday. But on Monday, we said that was at n equal to 0. On Tuesday, it's going to be at n equal to 1. On Wednesday, it's going to be at n equal to 2. And on Thursday, it's going to be at n equal to 3. Right? So, our n here is going to be 3 and not 4. I know Thursday is the fourth day of the week. But we are indexing from 0 and we are moving four steps from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Starting at zero, meaning I'm gonna move zero, one, two, three. So for me to calculate how much I'm going to have on this day, I'm going to use n equal to three and not n equal to two. So let's calculate a sub three. It's going to be hundred multiplied by one plus 
0 0.2 to the power of 3 minus 8 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.2 to the power of 3 minus 1 and then divide by 0 0.2. Now, if we put that on the calculator, let's see what it is. It's going to be 100 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.2 to the power of 3 minus 8. And then I'm going to put the whole of this on the calculator. And we get 143.68. So this is the amount which you're going to have on this day. Now, if we if we check the amount that we got when we did it manually, we also found 143.68, right? So it's very important to understand that if I'm starting, for example, if I say um it's now January and I give you um a money 200 rand. And I ask you how much will I have in December? Remember that our formula was derived from n equal to zero. This means that in December, to, for you to find how much you're going to have in December, you must use n equal to 11 and not n equal to 12. Why? Because we are indexing from zero. Now, how many steps should I move in order for me to get to December? Starting at zero. Well, if I start at one, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. But if I started zero, you want to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You see the difference? So our formula is derived from indexing from zero, not indexing from one. That is why you always have to go one day, um, one step back. Unless they tell you specifically that after 20 days. Now here they are being specific that after 20 days, right? It means you must use n equal to 20. But if I say if they say um from Monday to Sunday, Sunday is the seventh day, uh, okay, the first day of the week, right? So let's use Saturday for example. So from from Monday to Saturday, from Monday to Saturday is six days, right? So from Monday, if I'm counting from Monday, then it makes sense. I'm gonna say Saturday is the sixth day of the month. But Monday is at position zero. Therefore, Saturday will be at n equal to five. So this is how you can use mathematical modeling to model change when there are also subtractions which are happening. So this model here is also valid to um, interest whereby you are saving money, just gaining interest, and at the same time, you are withdrawing every month. So thank you for watching.